So let's take a look at surface integrals. So let's say you have the double integral described by some surface s of a multivariable function f of x, y, z times ds. And you're also given that z equals some function, let's just call it g, and it's in terms of x and y. So the formula to evaluate this double or the surface integral is going to be the double integral described by the region d of f of x comma y comma g of x comma y times the square root of 1 plus the partial derivative of z with respect to x squared plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y squared. And then we have dA on the outside. Now this part should be pretty familiar because this is part of the surface area, the original surface area formula. And right here, notice that we replaced z with g of x and y because we cannot do a double integral with three variables. So we have to put everything in terms of just two variables, in this case x and y. Now the good thing is this formula can also work instead of z equals g of x and y, let's say we have y equals some function h in terms of x and z. Then you can just switch up the formula a little bit and say the double integral described by the region d of f of x comma, now we're going to replace y with h of x and z. We're going to leave z alone. And then we have the square root of 1 plus, in this case instead of the partial derivative of z, it's going to be the partial derivative of y with respect to x squared, and then plus the partial derivative of y with respect to the other variable, z squared. And then we have the dA on the outside. Now I won't use this in the practice problems, but there's also another formula. Let's say instead of z equals some function, you're given some vector function r in terms of u and v. Then the formula for that will be the double integral described by the region d of f of r of u comma v and then times the magnitude of the cross product of r and u, r sub u and r sub v. And then we have dA. So if instead of x and y you're given a vector function in terms of u and v, then you can put everything in terms of u and v and evaluate as well. So for these next set of problems, let's go ahead and evaluate the surface integral. So for number one, we have the double integral described by the surface of x squared yz ds, and s is going to be part of the plane z equals 1 plus 2x plus 3y that lies above the rectangle and so the x bounds go from 0 to 3. I could write that. And the y bounds go from 0 to 2. So if I were to rewrite the formula to evaluate the surface integral, we have the double integral described by the region d of f of x comma y comma g of x y times the square root of 1 plus the partial derivative of z with respect to x squared plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y squared and then dA on the outside. So notice that we are given the z is equal to some function in terms of x and y. So we're going to go ahead and replace z inside the integral. So I'm going to say x squared times y times z, which is equal to 1 plus 2x plus 3y. Once again, we're doing this because we cannot do a double integral with three variables. We need to have only two variables. So we're putting everything in terms of just x and y. And so now we need times the square root of 1 plus partial derivative with respect to of z with respect to x. Now the partial derivative of z, the function z with respect to x, is just going to be 2, so 2 squared is 4, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y squared, so the partial derivative with, of z with respect to y is going to be 3, so then 3 squared is 9. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute the x squared y inside the parentheses, so we'll get x squared y plus 2x cubed y and then plus 3x squared y squared. And then the entire thing is multiplied by, if we simplify the radical, we have the square root of 14. So rewriting the double integral, we then have the double integral of what we have simplified this entire thing down to, which is going to be the square root of 14 times x squared y plus 2x cubed y, and then plus 3x squared y squared. And so now for our bounds of integration, realize the x bounds go from 0 to 3 and the y bounds go from 0 to 2. So we can put either one on the inside. Let's go ahead and start with x. So x bounds go from 0 to 3. We'll put dx on the inside. Y bounds go from 0 to 2. Let's put dy on the outside. So now let's go ahead and evaluate the integral. So evaluating the inside integral first. Now square root of 14 is just a constant, so I can leave that outside. 
So now the integral of x squared y with respect to x is going to be x cubed over 3 times y plus integral of 2x cubed y is going to be 2x to the 4th over 4 or x to the 4th over 2 times y plus integral of 3x squared y squared with respect to x is just going to be x cubed y squared. And so now we can evaluate from the x bounds of 0 to 3. So when I plug in 3 for x, we get square root of 14 times 3 cubed is 27, 27 over 3 is 9, so we get 9 times y, plus 3 to the 4th is 81, so 81 over 2, we can't simplify that, times y, and then plus 3 cubed, 27, so 27y squared. Now minus, when I plug in 0, but when I plug in 0 for x, we're basically going to get 0 plus 0 plus 0, so that's just going to be 0. That will cancel, and so we're left with the square root of 14 times 9y plus 81 over 2y, and then plus 27y squared. So now we can evaluate the outer integral from 0 to 2 with respect to y. Once again, square root of 14 is a constant. I can leave that outside. So when we evaluate the integral, we get square root of 14 times the integral of 9y is going to be 9 over 2y squared, plus the integral of 81 over 2y is 81 over 2y squared over 2. So that's 81 over 4y squared. And then plus integral of 27y squared is going to be 9y cubed. So now we can evaluate from the y bounds of 0 to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the square root of 14 times. Okay, now when I plug in 2 for y, we get 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 9 is 18. Plus 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 4 cancels. And so we get plus 81. And then plus... 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 9 is 72. Now minus, when I plug in 0 for y, we'll just get 0 plus 0 plus 0. So that's going to be 0, and that will cancel out. So now simplifying here, 81 plus 72 is going to be 153, and then 153 plus 18 is going to be 171. So the final answer is going to be 171 times the square root of 14. So now for number 2, we have the double integral described by the surface S of x squared z plus y squared z times ds, and s is going to be the hemisphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4, and it's giving us that z is greater than or equal to 0. Now, since it's giving us a restriction on z, I'm going to go ahead and actually isolate z from the equation of the hemisphere. So z squared equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So then if I take the square root, z is going to be plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Now realize that z has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I can basically get rid of this negative and say that z is just going to equal the positive square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So now that I have a z equation in terms of just x and y, I can go ahead and replace that into the or substitute it for z inside the integral. So we get the integral, if I rewrite it, of x squared times z, which is once again going to be the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And then we have plus y squared times z, which is the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So when I go ahead and substitute z in into what's inside the integral, we'll get x squared times z, so x squared times the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared, and plus y squared times z, once again, 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And then we need to take the square root, or multiply by the square root of 1 plus the partial root of z with respect to x. So let's go ahead and figure what that is first. The partial root of z with respect to x, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that as 4 minus x squared minus y squared to the 1 half, so I can go ahead and use a chain rule when I partially derive. So the partial root with respect to x is going to be 1 half times 4 minus x squared minus y squared to the negative 1 half times the partial derivative of the inside function with respect to x, which is negative 2x. Notice the 2's will cancel, and so we get negative x over the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Now the partial derivative of z with respect to y is going to be the exact same process, so I can go ahead and skip a couple of steps, but instead of x on the numerator, we're going to have y on the numerator. So we get negative y over the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So once again, inside the square root, we're going to have 1 plus the partial derivative of z with respect to x squared. 
So if we go ahead and take this values and square it, then we will get positive x squared on the numerator over just four minus x squared minus y squared. And then we need plus partial derivative of z with respect to y squared. So if we go ahead and square that, we get y squared over four minus x squared minus y squared. Now it's a good thing that we can go ahead and simplify everything here. So the very first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and factor out this square root from both x squared and y squared. So then we'll get the square root of four minus x squared minus y squared times x squared plus y squared. And then I can go ahead and simplify the radical. So we get times the square root. Since both of these have the same denominator, we can go ahead and add the numerator. So then we'll get one plus x squared plus y squared over four minus x squared minus y squared. So now I can go ahead and put it under the entire, or the entire thing under a double integral. Now the good thing is we don't even have to integrate in this form with x and y. So let's go ahead and first try graphing the hemisphere that's given to us. Now x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals four is the equation of a sphere with its center at the origin with an all around radius of two. Since the radius squared is four, the radius is gonna be the square root or two. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the radius equals two. Now if I go ahead and graph the equation of the sphere here, we'll just pretend that this is a sphere, its center is at zero, and its all around radius once again is gonna be two. Now here it says that z is greater than or equal to zero. So basically it tells us that the sphere, the part of the sphere that we need is only the part that is above the xy plane. That's why it's telling us that s is gonna be the hemisphere or the half sphere. So if I go ahead and redraw it, we're basically looking for the sphere that's above or the part of the sphere that's above the xy plane or that is in the positive z axis. So it's basically gonna look something like this. Now when we're trying to find the bounds of integration for this hemisphere, we basically need to look at a top view. So we're basically on the top looking down on the hemisphere. So when we look down, we're basically gonna get the base of the hemisphere or a circle. Once again, with the center at zero, zero and a radius of two. So once again, whenever we're using a double integral on a region that is a circle, it's best to use polar coordinates. So instead of x and y, we're gonna change everything in terms of r and theta. So if we look at the region here, the circle, the r bounds are obviously gonna go from zero to two, and the theta bounds is a complete circle is gonna go from zero to two pi. And once again, we also need to change everything we have inside of the integral into polar coordinates as well. So we have the double integral of the square root. Now negative x squared minus y squared is negative r squared. So we have four minus r squared times x squared plus y squared is r squared, and then times the square root of one plus x squared plus y squared is r squared over four negative x squared minus y squared once again is negative r squared. Now to simplify even further, I'm gonna go ahead and combine these two so that we get one whole fraction. So I can go ahead and rewrite positive one as four minus r squared over four minus r squared just to get common denominators, plus we have that fraction r squared over four minus r squared. These are both common denominators. I can go ahead and add the numerator. So we get four minus r squared plus r squared over four minus r squared. And then we do have the square root on the outside. Realize the negative r squared and positive r squared will cancel. The square root of four is two. So we get two over the square root of four minus r squared. So what I can do is rewrite this entire thing and rewrite it as what I've just found to be two over the square root of, once again, four minus r squared. Realize the square roots will cancel. And so what we're left with is two times r squared. Now realize whenever we do double integrals and we convert it to polar coordinates, we do need to multiply by that extra r variable. So rewriting the double integral, we have the double integral of two r cubed. And so the bounds, once again, the r bounds go from zero to two. Let's go ahead and put that first. So dr, and then we have d theta on the outside and the theta bounds are from zero to two pi. So now let's go ahead and evaluate this. So we get the integral from zero to two of 2r cubed dr. So the integral is going to be 2r to the fourth over 4, or 1 half r to the fourth. Let's go ahead and evaluate that from the r bounds of 0 to 2. So when I plug in 2 for r, we'll get 1 half times 2 to the fourth is 16, minus 0 to the fourth is 0. So 16 over 2 will give us 8. And so now we can evaluate the outer integral with respect to theta from 0 to 2 pi. 
integral of 8 with respect to theta is 8 times theta. We can evaluate from the theta bounds of 0 to 2 pi. So we get 8 times 2 pi minus 0. Then that will cancel and 2 pi times 8 will give us the final answer of 16 pi.